Hello, friends and family. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. I'm Tom. My wife, Melissa, is videoing. Tonight, we're going to make one of our favorite cookie recipes. We're going to make chocolate chip cookies. I got this recipe many years ago from my cousin, Aaron McClure, who was very gracious to share it with me, and it quickly became our very favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe. Now, I know there are a million different chocolate chip cookie recipes out there, but this one is our very favorite. We've tried a bunch, but we always come back to this one. Let's look at what you're going to need for this recipe. Now, let me tell you that I am doubling the recipe. We always do that because we like to freeze the cookie dough in cookie balls and have them to bake later. So I'm going to give you the regular recipe, the single recipe, just know that what I have out here is double what I'm telling you. So you're going to need three fourths of a cup of butter, that's one and a half sticks. You're going to need one fourth cup of shortening. I use better flavored Crisco, so some kind of shortening. You're going to need one cup of packed brown sugar. Now, it doesn't matter if you use light brown or dark brown, we prefer the light. The only difference in light and dark is that the dark brown has more molasses in it. So you can use whichever you prefer, but we use the light brown. You're going to need one half cup of regular white granulated sugar. Then you're going to need three fourths of a teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of salt. You're also going to need two eggs. You're going to need one teaspoon of vanilla, and you're going to need two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Then, of course, you cannot have chocolate chip cookies without chocolate chips. Our favorite is milk chocolate, but you're welcome to use semi-sweet or dark or whatever you prefer but milk chocolate is our favorite. All right. Again, I am doubling the recipe so that we can bake some tonight and have cookie dough to freeze later. So um, just remember that you can always go right below this video in the description box where you see the title and you can either click on the title or sometimes it'll say see more and you can click on that, but that box will expand when you click on it and Melissa always puts the written recipe there for you to have so that you don't have to write it down as we go. But what she will put is the single recipe. She won't put the double recipe that I'm doing. All right, we're going to start by creaming together our room temperature butter and our room temperature shortening. We're just gonna put those in our mixer. And let those mix together for a little while. I will tell you that this amount of cookie dough is very taxing on my mixer. It is, it just, it really strains it to do a double batch, but I just don't see a reason to go to the trouble to make homemade fresh cookies and not have plenty of dough out of the batch and for your trouble. So I always double the recipe when I'm making cookies, especially if my mixer will hold a double batch. All right, while that's mixing, I'm gonna grab the sugars. And I am going to add the baking soda and the salt to my brown sugar. If you want to, you can just add it all together in the same bowl, but I didn't do that because I wanted you to be able to see how much I had of each, but you can just put your brown sugar, white sugar, your salt, and your baking soda all together. Okay, let's slow this down and add our sugars. I think my measuring cup must have been damp. 
because that sugar didn't want to come out. Start adding our brown sugar, salt, and baking soda. You'll notice I have my splash guard on the mixer. Right now everything's fine, but once I get most of it in here and start to add the flour, it will want to fly out of there. In fact, it probably will fly out of there some, but the splash guard does help. down low enough. I think I can just break it in. Okay. Right now we're going to let that mix for just a minute because we really want those sugars to start to dissolve with that butter and shortening. Speed it up just a little bit. I'm going to stop that and scrape my mixer. I do not have on my scraper blade tonight because if we don't put liquid in um, in the mixer bowl to start with, it really wants to squeak that it is so tight and it scrapes the bowl so closely that that rubber blade that is the scraper really squeaks bad. <laughs> Doesn't sound good, does it, Melissa? That's a little irritating. Probably wouldn't make the most pleasant video. Uh, you're being generous when you say it's a little irritating. I think it's a lot irritating. But I'm just using the regular blade tonight, so I will have to scrape the bowl a few times. Speed it up a little bit so nothing sticks to the beater. Now let's add our liquids. We'll add our vanilla and our eggs. Slow it down just a little bit to add these so it doesn't splash out. And the single recipe, you just need one teaspoon. Of course, I'm doubling it. and put the eggs in. I normally add them one at a time. I don't guess you really have to, but I think it just helps them blend up a little better. Speed that up just a little bit and then we'll scrape the bowl again. Now that it's got the liquids in there, I think it would probably be fine to go back to that beater blade, or the scraper blade. It's plenty moist enough now that I don't think it would squeak. But why dirty two blades? So we'll just leave it now. Break this down. Well, that is thick around the edges. That's thicker. Yes, it is. We had this flour. It's gonna get really thick. Put that back in. Scrape that spatula off. Get all that in there that I can. You know, everybody loves comfort food. When I think of comfort food, I think about things like chicken and dumplings, turkey and dressing, tomato soup and grilled cheese, sandwiches. But I also think about 
chocolate chip cookies. Did you ever get home from school and your mom had chocolate chip cookies, warm chocolate chip cookies waiting for you? Mm, that's the best. Get some fingers nice off. And warm ones. Oh mm. man. With milk. My mom did that occasionally. Unfortunately for our girls, I didn't get that since we were both at school and with that's them. That's right. <laughs> we were both teachers and they were with us. So um, we made them at night though. All right, and we'll start adding the flour. And because I'm adding five cups instead of the two and a half for a normal batch, it's going to take a little while. So I doubt you want to stay and watch me add all this flour. We will come back when we get all the flour added in and we are ready to put in the chocolate chips. And then we will scoop out some cookie dough. We'll be back in just a couple minutes when I get all this flour incorporated. Okay, we have incorporated all of the flour and now we're ready to add our chocolate chips. What you need is a 12 ounce and 11 ounce bag. I think they're 11 ounces now, they used to be 12. So we're just going to add those in. Let them mix and yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a strain. Add them in, let them mix in. I know some people might be saying, oh, it's gonna break up those chocolate chips. Actually, you know, it doesn't. They do pretty well. Let's take our spatula, push them down in there a little bit so that they get mixed in well. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Oh, they look, back that's it. okay. They look like they're mixed in pretty well. And I'm going to use my fingers because I can get a whole lot more of the batter off here with my fingers than I can this stiff spatula. I promise I did wash my fingers, washed my hands before we started. So they are good and clean. I know you're not supposed to eat raw eggs. Well, I'm getting ready to, to. You're not supposed to eat raw cookie dough, but I have probably eaten a hundred cookies worth in my lifetime that were raw. And our girls were always ones to raid the freezer of the cookie dough balls. They still do. <laughs> they do. They're in their mid-20s. Well, one of them's late 20s. And when they come to our house... They go to the freezer and start looking for frozen cookie dough. And mostly they're looking for chocolate chip cookies, aren't they? I think those are the favorites frozen like that. Yeah. And they, so I'm not telling anybody to eat raw cookie dough, but I'm just saying we've done it for a long time. And we're still alive to talk about it, but. Yep. I would never recommend it to anybody, just on the off chance. Okay. Oh, 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 there's some batter back here. Let's save that. Okay. Now, let's get our cookie sheet. We are not baking all this tonight. I told you earlier, we always do a double batch so we can freeze it. We love to have it in the freezer and, <clears throat> you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, one of us gets a hankering for a chocolate chip cookie. We can, we can have just one if you want it. We can have one. Or one each or three each. So, I'm going to scoop these out. I don't know if I could find my towel. There it is. Okay. I'm going to scoop these out. Now, I will, you can bake these right now. You can bake them just the way they are. Um, and they won't take very long, but... By the way, this is a three tablespoon scoop. If you're wondering what size scoop I'm using, it's three tablespoons. But if you bake these right now, they are going to spread out some. They're going to be thinner cookies. They won't be as thick and they, um, they spread. They're thin and they spread a lot. So 
I'm gonna move this one over kind of in the middle. Kind of offset them a little bit. So you just decide. I will stick this sheet pan with six cookies on it, which is what we're baking tonight. I will stick it in the freezer for, um, I don't know, hour, hour and a half. Let them freeze pretty solid, and then um, we'll come back and bake them. And while they're freezing, let me stick these in the freezer. Give me just a second. Okay, while those are freezing, I will go ahead and scoop out our other dough and get it ready to go in the freezer. But now I do this a little differently because we're not baking them. I put them with the sides almost touching. Um, and then once they're completely frozen, we take them off of this parchment paper line baking sheet and we store them in Ziploc freezer bags. Or if we know we're going to keep them for a long time, well, meaning a few weeks, they don't last long. But if we know we're going to keep them for a while, once they're frozen, we may even Ziploc, or uh, not Ziploc, what am I trying to say? Vacuum seal them. But I rarely do that because they just don't last that long. All right, we are going to finish scooping these out. And when our cookies that are already in the freezer are cold enough, almost frozen, we will come back and put them in the oven and let you see what they look like when they come out of the oven. We'll be back soon. We really had not intended to come back until we were ready to bake the six cookies we put in the freezer. But we just thought you might like to see this beautiful tray full of cookie dough balls ready to be frozen for us to eat later. Now, on this tray, we have 38, I believe. So that 38 plus the six we've already put in the freezer makes 44 and a couple cookies worth might have disappeared in the process of scooping these out i wouldn't know anything about that uh-huh <laughs> right okay guilty as charged <laughs> i was gonna say i'm not gonna tell you who ate it but you can figure it out it wasn't just me though <laughs> the one you under the best too <laughs> she's right i ate some of it too all right, so you probably would get in a single batch about 23, 24 cookies if you used a three tablespoon scoop. So about two dozen cookies in the single batch. We got probably close to 48 with what we ate while we were scooping it. So it's beautiful cookie dough and this is ready to go in the freezer. All right, now this time we really aren't coming back until we are ready to bake our cookies. We'll be back. Our cookies have been in the freezer for about an hour to an hour and a half, and they are frozen solid. So we're going to put them in the oven. Now freezing them will keep them from spreading too far and getting too thin. If you like a big, thin cookie, then don't freeze them. We like smaller cookies that are a little thicker. So let's stick them in the oven. Our oven has been preheated to 375 degrees and we will start by baking them for about eight minutes and then we'll watch them to see when they're ready. You do not want them to get brown around the edges. If they get brown, they're overdone and they get a little hard. At least they are for us. Now, if you like crispy cookies, then maybe you'll want to do that. But we will take them out before they get too brown around the edges. All right, let's set the timer for eight minutes and we'll start watching. And when they come out, 
we'll be back to show you what they look right. like. The cookies have been in for about 14 minutes. So we're going to turn the oven off and take them out. Oh, they look good. Now, if they had been put in straight from making them, eight minutes would have been about right. But because we fixed them from frozen, they needed a little longer. These were in about 14 minutes. So if you bake them, as soon as you make them, eight minutes is probably about right, eight or nine minutes. If you bake them from frozen, they'll probably take 13, 14, 15 minutes. You'll just have to watch them. I think they are probably, well, I don't know. They're moving around pretty well. I always like to take them off the pan they were baking on and put them directly on the countertop so they cool quicker because who wants to wait? But sometimes it takes them a little while to move around on the sheet, but you know, they're moving pretty well. I'm afraid they're too hot for us to taste right now. So we will come back in just a couple minutes. We'll let them cool for a little bit and we'll come back and taste one for you. These look good enough to eat. My goodness, what beautiful cookies. I want you to look at something before I eat, bite into it. Look how nice and thick that is. It's a good sized cookie too. That's as big as the palm of my hand. But it did not flatten out. You know, a lot of chocolate chip cookies get very flat, and you can see the chocolate chips in the, sticking up out of them. But that's a nice, thick cookie. Very cakey. Mmm, 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 mmm. Only thing missing is a glass of milk. I was going to say, somebody get me a glass of milk. Huh? Look at this. I hope you can see this. Yum. Can you see the inside of that? It's really nice. Oh, it's so soft. Mm. That's so good. We enjoy having these because we have a lot of kind of late minute or last minute gang nights that kind of pop up for us in the winter time and it's nice to have a little something to share with your friends that come over. Yeah. If somebody drops by, you jerk some cookies out of the freezer, throw them in the oven. 14, 15 minutes later, you have fresh cookies. Maybe, Maybe that's, that's why <laughs> friends drop over. Maybe that's why we have spontaneous game nights. That just occurred to me. That's okay. I'm happy for them to come. Man, these are good. Thanks to my cousin, Aaron, for sharing this wonderful recipe. We love it. If you haven't already, please click the thumbs up. Give us a like so we know you liked our video. If you haven't already, click subscribe and the little notification bell. And share our video. The more you share our videos and the more people that see them, the more subscribers we may get. And that helps us to be able to put more videos on. So. Share it away. Do share all you want to. Remember that Melissa will put the recipe in the box below the video. Just click on it and it will expand and you can get the written recipe right there. Thank you so much for watching our videos. We appreciate it. And remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day. I'm going to eat the rest of this cookie.